In this video, I'm going to be dealing with Rolle's theorem. We're going to talk about the theorem, we're going to compare it to a graphical representation, and then I'm going to work out one example where we verify whether or not the theorem holds, and then we'll find all values of C um, that are guaranteed by the theorem. Okay. Um, so, first of all, Rolle's theorem. We're going to let F be continuous on the closed interval from A to B and differentiable on the open interval from A to B. Okay. If F of A equals F of B, then there is at least one number C in the open interval from A to B such that the derivative at C is equal to zero. Okay, so um, this is a pretty simple, straightforward theorem. You can just check very easily to see if, they can, if it's continuous on the closed and differentiable on the open, which is uh, pretty much a, a very crucial thing that you've got to make sure about all of your functions for the majority of your theorems to hold. All right, then you're going to look specifically at f of a and f of b. All right, and then if those are equal to each other, then we've got that one number C that is where the derivative is going to be equal to zero. All right, now, so in this first scenario, all right, I've just got a nice little upside down parabola here, all right, and my interval from A to B, all right, and F of A does equal F of B. All right, well, when F of A equals F of B, basically what I have going on right there at F of A equaling F of B is what? I've got a secant line. I've got a secant line right there. And basically what this is saying is that, all right, if that is true, all right, then there's going to be some value C in this interval, some place in this interval where the derivative is equal to zero. Okay, well, if we kind of look at this picture, okay, all right, right about there would be where my derivative would be zero. All right, so my derivative right there would be zero. So my value of C would fall right about there. Okay, now for that derivative to be zero, well, what do I got going on there? I have a tangent line. Okay, so that tangent line and that secant line are parallel. Okay, and you, you can find that value of C. So in this case, I've got just exactly one place where that tangent line is parallel to the secant line and that secant line being located at f of a equals f of b. All right, now, in this scenario over here, since the, the theorem did say at least one value c, all right, so this one had one, all right, now, if we take a look at this one, all right, here's a, another polynomial curve, all right, my interval from a to b, so f of a is equal to f of b, so again, if I draw a line through that right there, there is my secant line, Okay, where my f of a equals f of b. We'll even write that here, f of a equals f of b. Okay, now, where else is there lines that are parallel to that secant line, which makes the derivative equal to zero? Okay, well, right about in here, all right, I would have the derivative being zero. So there's a value of c, so we'll call that c sub one, because my derivative equals zero there and that line is parallel to my secant line. All right, another derivative being zero would be right there. All right, so there would be another c value, c sub two, all right, because the derivative equals zero. And then where else? Well, looking right there at that max point right there, then I have a <clears throat> another derivative equal to zero right there. So then I have a third value. All right, all three values being in A to B, in that open interval from A to B, okay? But this just kind of guarantees, okay, if F of A equals F of B, you're going to have at least one number in that interval such that the derivative equals zero, okay? So it's kind of a nice little pictorial you know, way to take a look at that theorem and be able to understand it and explain it a little bit better. All right, now let's take a look at an example here. And we'll do all parts of what it says. All right, sometimes textbooks get pretty thorough in what they want you to do for the question. So um, in my classroom, if my students were doing something like this and it says verify that Rolle's theorem applies, I would actually expect them to write things down where they verified that it applied. All right, and then find all values of C for which the theorem holds. Okay, so let's do the verify part first. All right, we've got to verify that the theorem holds because if it doesn't hold, then we can't go about finding any values of C because the theorem doesn't hold. All right, so in um, 
the definition, it said that it has to be, that the function has to be continuous on the closed and differentiable on the open. All right, so I'm going to look at this right here. This is a nice little polynomial curve. Polynomials are continuous and differentiable everywhere. So on that interval, I am um, assured that it is going to be continuous on that closed interval. And because it's smooth and continuous, it's going to be differentiable everywhere. So I know it's differentiable on that open. So we're going to write that down. We've talked it through. Now we're going to write it down. So f of x is continuous. I'm going to abbreviate there on that closed interval from 0 to 5. And f of x is differentiable on the open interval from 0 to 5. All right, and then it said that f of a has to equal f of b. So then you need to do some calculations. All right, so let's plug in f of 0. All right, well, if I plug 0 into all of that, then I'm going to get 0. And then if I plug in f of 5, let's see, I'd have 25 minus 25. Again, I'm going to have 0 there. So my f of a does equal my f of b. Okay, so I verified everything that I need to check to make sure that that, that theorem holds. All right, now let's um, do a therefore statement just to draw a conclusion about what we've been talking about and all that sort. All right, so since f of x is continuous, and I'm going to abbreviate again, on that closed interval from 0 to 5 and differentiable on the open interval from 0 to 5, and since f of 0 is equal to f of 5, then Rolle's theorem applies. We went through all crucial parts there and just kind of summarized what we had wrote down and what we had talked about on that. Okay, now, uh, the theorem says that if f of a f of a equals f of b, which we know it does, then there has to be at least one value c where the derivative at c equals zero. So we're trying to find that value right there. So that right there, that part of the theorem is going to help you remember what you're going to do next. I'm going to try to find values of c where my derivative equals zero. So that means I'm going to have to calculate my derivative, set it equal to zero, and solve that equation and try to find those values of c. So I'm going to uh, find c right now, find all values of c that there might be. So I'm going to take this original function and I'm going to take the derivative. So f prime of x, all right, this one would be a 2x and then minus 5, so a relatively simple derivative. Now I'm going to set that derivative equal to 0, so 2x minus 5 equals 0. Let's go ahead and solve that equation. It's a nice little two-step equation, so x equals 5 halves. All right, so what that means is um, you're going to have to check first. Uh, 5 halves is 2 and a half. Is 2 and a half in the interval? Yes, it is. Okay, so let's do some checking here. Since um, 2 and a half is in that open interval from 0 to 5, and f prime of two and a half equals zero, then c equals two and a half. My value at c, where the derivative is going to be equal to zero, is at c equal two and a half. Okay. And I would venture to say is um, that you've got to definitely look at this value when you get done and make sure it's in there. I mean, the theorem holds, it should be in there, but you always definitely want to check, uh, especially if you get maybe two values where the derivative um, is equal to zero, where you solve that set equal when you get two values, one of them's in the interval, one of them is not. The theorem holds in saying just the one that is in the center. All right, so um, just one you know, quick look at Rolle's theorem, what it means from a graphical standpoint, and then a problem where you can actually apply it algebraically and find those values of C where that derivative equals zero. Definitely thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.